In this video, we will write a program in emulator 8086 that computes factorial. So factorial, um, a factorial of um, 3, for example, is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. Factorial of 4 is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. So first, we need a loop. So we need to put the number that we want to compute factorial for in CX. So CX would be first uh, 4, then 3, then 2, then 1. OK? And then we want the register AX for the result. So we want to uh, multiply dx and dx is the register for multiplication so we're gonna um, multiply the value in dx by the value in ax and store the value in ax that's why it's one if it's zero uh, it's initially zero so if you leave it as zero then the result would be always zero and we don't want that we want that and then in order to loop through the code that we want to loop through, we should give it a label. So let's call it for fact, for factorial. And uh, for readability, let's tab a little bit. Let's move, um, sorry. Let's move CX to, D, to DX. And the reason is that uh, DX is the register for multiplication. If you want to multiply anything, you should put it in dx. And then, of course, multiply whatever in dx by whatever in ax and store the value in ax. Um, so at, at first, um, cx would be 4. That would be moved to dx. So dx would be 4. 4 times whatever in ax, it's 1. 4 times 1, it's going to be 1. And then... 4 will be stored in x and the second round um, cx will move to dx so 3 it would be 3 will move to dx 3 times 4 okay that would be 12 and then that would be stored in uh, ax and it will continue like this so it's we still need a loop um, fact or for fact. Let's see. So let's try three first. Factorial of three. As you can see, it's six. How about the factorial of four? Eighteen in hexadecimal. So let's convert that to eighteen. It's gonna be twenty-four in decimal. So correct. How about the factorial of five? Seventy-eight in hex. So seventy-eight. So it's 120 in decimal, so that's correct. Okay, let's change this to sum. Sum of consecutive numbers. Sum of consecutive numbers. What I mean by that is if I give it 5, I want it to add 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. If I give it 3, I want 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is 6. Okay. I give it 4, 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is 10. So that's what I want. So how to do that? To do that? Well, this is not going to change. We still need this loop. This one is going to change. Or we can initialize the value to 0. But it's initially 0, so we don't need it. Um, let's change this name. We can leave it, but let's change it to sum. Better. Uh, 
this is just for readability um, then move dx to cx no we don't want that we don't want dx because we're not multiplying anything um, so we're gonna add Mm. we're gonna add and we want the result to be in ax so yes we want to add whatever in cx and store the value to ax um, and that's it and a loop through the sum okay so let's try three and we're expecting three plus two plus one Correct, it's six. Let's try four. We are expecting 10. Correct, it's 10 in hexadecimal. So um, let's convert zero A. It's 10, yeah, in decimal, about five. Um, zero F. Of course, it's um, correct, but let's make sure it's 15, so correct, yeah. So how it works? Well, uh, this is the loop. It will be, if we start it with five, it's gonna be five, then four, then three, then two, then one. So at first, in the first round of the loop, there's gonna be five, five plus zero. We can actually Initialize it to zero to make sure it's zero, but it doesn't matter um, So it's gonna be z uh, five plus zero and then the um, Result will be stored in ax so ax would be five and the second round cx will decrement and it will be four So four plus five is gonna be nine and then three and so on until We get the result um, Thank you